Hey everybody, this is Paul. So in this video, I'm going to do an example of how we can find the inverse of some number mod some other number. So all of the numbers that we deal with in mod 392 are going to be integers from zero all the way up to 391. You're basically dealing with a set of numbers from zero all the way up to whatever your modulus is, which we'll just call n minus one. So in our case, the possible values we can get in mod 392 are the integers from 0 all the way up to 391. So 27 to the minus 1 or 27 inverse is really a fraction. It's 1 over 27 and we don't really have any way to represent a fraction if we're only dealing with the numbers from 0 all the way up to 391. How can we modify 27 inverse so that it represents one of these numbers from 0 to 391 in mod 392. Well, to answer that question, essentially what we're saying is we want to find something that we can multiply 27 by mod 392 and have that result be equivalent to the number 1. So why is that exactly? Well, if we have 27 times x is equal to 1, well, if we divide the left and right hand side by 27, we have x is equal to 1 divided by 27, or essentially 27 inverse, 27 to the minus 1. So if we can solve 27 times some number, have that map to the value 1 when we're dealing with mod 392, then x will be the inverse of 27. So to start this process, we're going to begin with the Euclidean algorithm. So what we're going to do with the Euclidean algorithm is we're going to start with the number 3, 92, which is our modulus, then we're going to make that equal to 27 multiplied by some number plus some remainder. If you take 392, divide it by 27, you find out that 27 goes into 392 14 times. 14 times 27 is equal to 378, and then 392 minus 378 is equal to 14. So 392 is the same thing as taking 27, multiplying 27 by 14, and then adding 14. So now to continue with the Euclidean algorithm, we now take this number right here and just move it over there. And then the number in this position, we move it to where the number in this position was. So the next step of the Euclidean algorithm, we're looking at 27 is equal to, this time we're looking at 14 times some number, plus some remainder. So 14 goes into 27 one time. 14 times one is 14, and 27 minus 14 is equal to 13. So that tells us that 27 is equal to 14 times one plus 13. So now for the next step, we go ahead and we move our 14 below the 27 here, and we move our 13 below our 14 here. So 14 can be represented as 13, times the number 1 plus a remainder of 1. So now that we've got these three equations right here, let's just go ahead and rewrite them in a slightly different order. Starting with this one right here, we're going to subtract the 13 times 1. So we'll leave the 14 on the left hand side. So 14, and then we're subtracting 13 times 1, and we can do that by adding a 13 times a negative 1. 13 times a negative 1 is the same thing as minus 13 times 1. And then we're going to leave the remainder on the right hand side. So let's go ahead and do that with the middle equation here. So 27, we'll go ahead and keep on the left hand side. And then we want to go ahead and subtract the 14 times 1. So we can subtract the 14 times 1 from both sides and represent that as a positive 14 times a negative 1 on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, we'll just keep this 13 here. And we do that one more time to the top equation here. So we have 392, we'll keep that on the left hand side. And then we're going to subtract the 27 times 14. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to add a positive 27 times a negative 14. And then that is equal to the right hand side, which is 14. So now that we've 
got these three equations, let's start with this one right here, 14 plus 13 times negative one is equal to one. So notice, we also have another representation for 13 right here. 13 is equal to 27 plus 14 minus one. So let's go ahead and substitute this part right here into the 13 here, because the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. All of this stuff is equal to 13. So we'll just plug all of this stuff into the equation right here where it says 13. So let's go ahead and just do that up above here. So starting with, we'll just go ahead and label this. This will be equation one, this will be equation two, and I'll call this one equation three. So looking at equation one here, we've got 14. And then we're going to add 13, but for 13 we're going to do this substitution. 13 equals all of this stuff right here. 27 plus 14 times a negative one. 27 plus 14 times a negative one. So that's our 13 in this part of the equation right here. And then that's multiplied by a negative one. And then finally, that is equal to one. So now we're going to do a little simplification. So we're going to distribute the negative one into both of these terms right here. So negative one times 27, let's go ahead and write the 14 here. And then negative one times 27, we're just going to go ahead and leave that as 27 times negative one. Then a negative one times a negative one is a positive one. So this term becomes 14 times positive one or simply 14 and then that's equal to one. So notice here, we have 14 here, and we have 14 here. We can represent that as two times 14. So we're just going to rewrite this now as two times 14 plus 27 times a negative one is equal to one. So notice now with this new equation, we have the number 14 right here. And we have a representation for 14 here. 14 is equal to all of this stuff right there. Let's go ahead and use the value of 14 that we have written right here and plug it into the 14 right there. So that gives us two times, and then 14 is equal to 392 plus 27 times a negative 14, so 27 times a negative 14. So that takes care of two, and then this whole part right here is the 14 that's right there. So two times 14 essentially, plus 27 times a negative one is equal to one. So now let's go ahead and simplify. So two times 392, we'll just go ahead and write that just how it is. Two times 392 plus and then we have two times 27 times a negative 14. That gives us 27 times, and then we'll do the two times the negative 14, 27 times negative 28. And then we'll add that to the 27 times a negative one. And then that is equal to the right hand side, which is one. So now we have a 27 times negative 28, and we have a 27 times negative one. If we add these two terms together, that's 27 times a negative 29. So that gives us the result two times 392 plus 27 times a negative 29. And then that's equal to one. This whole process we're really doing in mod 392. So we need to be able to convert this negative 29 into a number that ranges from zero to the number 391. So notice that 29 is less than 392. So that makes it really simple. We can just simply take 392 and subtract 29, and that will give us an equivalent value for negative 29 mod 392. So 392 minus 29 is equal to 363. So we can just replace the 29 here with 363. And so now we have two times 392 plus 27 times 363 is equal to one mod 392. So notice here, two times 392, well, anything times 392 is zero because 392 is our mod. So really anything times 392 
if we're dealing with a mod of 392, is just going to be zero. So this term right here goes to zero, and that leaves us with the result 27 times 363 is equal to one mod 392. This is the answer we're looking for, because if we divide the left and right hand side by 27, then this becomes 363 on the left hand side, is equal to 1 over 27, or essentially is equal to 27 to the minus 1, or 27 inverse. So 27 inverse is equal to 363 when we're dealing with modulus 392. So it turns out that 363 is our answer. So 27 inverse is equal to 363 when we're dealing with mod 392. So anyway, hopefully that helps all of you guys who were asking me to make this video. Thank you for watching, and if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.